Hey everybody, this is Jim, and welcome back to Introduction to Corn Shell. This is Lesson 2A, and the last time we went over how you do some fundamental printing. In other words, how you put stuff out from a program. So today I wanted to go over how we store information inside of a Corn Shell script. But first, let's go over once again some very important fundamental things that we have to have in a corn shell program. Once again, first line, first column, pound, exclamation point, slash bin, slash ksh. What this does is it t is when the script is run, it says to the Unix operating system that any line of code in this script will be known either to the corn shell or it will be known to the Unix operating system. Next up, we just have the name of the script and I highly recommend you put that right at the beginning and uh, you also have a, co uh, a couple comment lines about what the script does it's a very good habit to get into putting it right up at the top because you may not remember what you wrote the script for two years down the road or if you give the script to somebody and somebody gives it to somebody and somebody gives it to somebody they're not going to know exactly what the script does. It's best just to have a little description up above at the beginning of what the script does. Also, it's very good to give some uh, contact information about who wrote it and some contact information on how to get a hold of you. Okay, so let's go over how we would take and store information in a corn shell script. We do that through what is called a variable. And why, why is it called a variable? Because you can store information inside of it, and then later on, you can change the value of what you store in that variable. Hence, the value inside is variable. So therefore, what we call the storage area, we call it variable. So let's take a look at how we do that. This line right here. This says that the variable lowercase y is going to hold the value of 5. Uh, now one thing I want you to notice here is that there's no spaces in this assignment here. Corn, this is one of those rare instances where corn shell is picky about white space. So when you create a storage area, a variable, and you assign a value to it, you can't have white spaces on the line here. In other words, here's the variable name, the equal sign, and then the value. There's no spaces in between that. Of course, you can put spaces after it and put a comment or something like that if you want to. But as far as the actual uh, assignment, it can be no spaces in between the variable name, the equal sign, and the equal sign and the value. Now, the variable name, the storage area, the name of the storage area has to have the following traits. Variable names can consist of letters, numbers, underscores. However, they cannot begin with numbers. And they are case sensitive. So as you can see we have a storage area here called lowercase y and it gets assigned a value of 5. Here we have a st another storage area called uppercase y it's assigned a value of 7. These two variables are totally different critters. So I recommend that you stick with the convention, find a convention that works for you and stick with it. In other words, don't start naming variables lowercase z and then have another variable called uppercase z. Uh, a couple reasons why. One is it can get very confusing um, trying to remember whether which what lowercase z was and what uppercase z was. You might get confused as to what your intent was for them. Also, they can look very similar. Uh, I dissuade you from using all, upper all uppercase in your variable names because corn shell 
uh, has some special variables it sets aside and it uses all uppercase so you don't want to get people confused having them think that a variable that you created is actually uh, one that the system created. What I recommend is making your variable names descriptive and using something called the camel hump method which is these two examples. So this is very descriptive here. It says that the, the storage area, the name of it, is called input file. And it will contain the string Etsy password. So in this example here, each word, the beginning of each word in the variable name is capitalized, the i in input and the f in file. And the same thing down here, age of house is consist the variable name consists of three words and the beginning of each word is capitalized. It's called the camel hump method because as you can see it kinda looks like a camel's humps depending on what font you use of course. So once again when you assign a value to a variable you can't have spaces between the variable name the equal sign and you can't have spaces between the equal sign and the value that it's assigned. Uh, variables can be numbers, excuse me, the values that you assign to variables can be numbers or they can be strings. So now that you see how to put a value into a storage area, how do you get the value out of the storage area? Well you do that by putting a dollar sign in front of the variable name. So this print line right here will print y is it will come to this point see the dollar sign y and say oh, I gotta go up to the variable y and find out what's inside of it. Once it finds out what's inside of it which in this case which in this case is 5 it goes out and puts the 5 right here. That's why it's called variable substitution. So this line right here will print out y is 5 which is what you what you will see when we run the script. Now the next line, uh, the next example I want to show you is that you can uh, reassign the value to a variable. Once again no spaces. So what we're doing is we're going to the storage area called y lowercase y and we're putting the value of 92 in it wh where it was 5 and once again that's why these are called variables because their value can change and the other thing I wanted to show you in this next print statement is okay normally when you see a dollar sign it means we're going to do variable substitution what happens if you just want to print out a dollar sign well you do that by putting a slash in front of the dollar sign. Now whenever you see a slash I want you to think this. A slash, a backslash, adds to or removes from the meaning of the next character. Now normally the meaning of a dollar sign is to do variable substitution but because there's a slash in front of it that means don't do it. Just print a dollar sign. So in this example we have dollar sign y is 92. That's what gets printed out. Last example I want to show you is all these two examples I'm using double quotes. Double quotes allow this type of dollar sign substitution. Well, single quotes don't allow any type of substitution. With single quotes what you see is what you get. So this is going to print exactly what you see backslash dollar sign y is dollar sign y. Okay, let's save this and we'll go let's run the program. In order to do that we first have to make it executable and to do that you use the change mod command in Unix. Uh, you say u for user plus x for execute the name of the file and then you say the name, you give it the location of the file, which in this case is the present directory, which is slash, excuse me, which is the dot. Then you put a slash and 
give it the name of the file. Okay, so as you can see, this very first print statement, it did in fact do the dollar sign substitution of 5. And in the next print statement, because we reassigned the value of the dollar of y to be 92, that's what it printed. And it did print that dollar sign right there. So that backslash dollar sign means just print me a dollar sign. And in the last example, we had the single quotes instead of the double quotes, and it did print exactly what was inside of the single quotes.